Hey, 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 happy Thursday. Tonight, I am going to continue with my second part of my live playthrough of Adventure Games The Dungeon from Cosmos Games. So come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, howdy, howdy. I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com, which I happen to be the founder and editor-in-chief. Tonight is Thursday, April 9th, 2020. This is episode 468 of The Daily Dope. If this is your first time joining me, uh, it's kind of an odd time to join me because I'm in the middle of a playthrough. <laughs> but if it is your first time joining me, welcome aboard. I do want to point out, this is very, very casual. This is not rocket surgery by any stretch of the imagination. Normally, the Daily Dope, I bring you the latest tabletop gaming news. Because of the current pandemic, we're not seeing a ton of news right now. So what we're doing is we're sharing some unboxings and maybe a review here and there but for the most part doing some playthroughs just kind of blowing off steam so we can kind of kick back and relax maybe take our minds off of the real world for a couple of moments out there as well so do you want to point out super casual just uh kind of kicking it and uh hopefully have some folks hanging out in chat having a good time before I get started, though, I do want to thank everyone out there, all the doctors, the nurses, the EMTs, everybody. We're talking and going to like firefighters and police officers and people working fast food places, truck drivers, anybody who is out there right now lending a hand to both protect us as well as uh, save folks out there who have um, come down with COVID-19. I want to say thank you so, so very much for uh, for all your hard work and for actually putting yourselves at risk as well. So, thank you. All right. Anyway, got a little bit of news real quick. Do want to point out, it was announced earlier today that the Origins Game Fair is being moved from June to October. So it is going to take place at the Greater Columbus Convention Center, which I have been to many, many times. Of course, every year when I cover Origins. And uh, the date has been moved to October 7th through the 11th. So of course I changed my, uh, my hotel reservations too. So thankfully I was not staying at some big ritzy hotel. Cause God knows, well, can I pull that off? So it's pretty easy to uh, to change my reservation through booking.com. So do want to point out, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you subscribe to the channel, and if you haven't, why not? But if you do subscribe, please ring that little bell because it will not only notify you when the Daily Dope streams live Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube. It'll also tell you when I upload standalone videos as well. So uh, our upcoming Call of Cthulhu stream, which really isn't going to be a stream. It's just going to be a recording of, of us playing on Fantasy Grounds. Uh, that will be hopefully started this weekend. Fingers crossed, of course. Do want to mention also, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. There are a lot of articles up very recently. In fact, more came, I posted more today. There's a lot of freebies out there you want to get your hands on. And of course, it's Thursday, so that means there are free PC games from the Epic Games Store. This week, we've got a couple, and they are uh, more about solving mysteries, the two games. It is uh, Close to the Sun 
and Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. So definitely check those out and you can't beat free. All right, I also want to mention because this stream is live, that also means chat is available on YouTube. It's not on screen. It's one of the ways that I keep some of the more unusual commenters at bay. But uh, I do my best to pay attention to the chat. So if you'd like to say howdy, or maybe you've got a question or comment, or maybe you want to just uh, talk about what's going on with me playing the dungeon, by all means, chime in. I will do my best to respond. So, so far, we've got the Madman, Kabuki Kid, Flaming Huron are in chat. Good to see everybody popping in. Thank you very much. Kabuki Kid is mentioning that uh, BGG Spring has been canceled. So, I'm not sure when they announced the cancellation, because I know a couple of days ago, they still had not changed uh, anything. So, I was kind of, kind of like, eh... So Fleming Huron points out there's already a dislike. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah, we get this. If this happens all the time, there'll be there'll be somebody who gets a bug up their ass and they decide they're just gonna go do a dislike on a bunch of videos. It's I think it's actually it might be the same person, so don't know. Don't care either, really. So yeah, if if uh Yeah, that makes them feel better. Uh, knock themselves out. Or maybe I'll knock him out. <laughs> Just kidding. Rob German's in chat saying everything's going to be canceled. LOL. Uh, I don't know if everything's going to be canceled. I still have not heard anything as far as the um, San Diego Comic-Con. So that's still up in the air. Well, it's still going on. But I uh, don't know. And that'll be very difficult for them to push back because that takes place at the San Diego Convention Center. And I'm sure that is booked a lot. So uh, Gen Con, don't know either. That's end of July. Not sure. I think we probably have, uh, we probably have about another month before we hear anything about Gen Con. Got my fingers crossed though. And of course I keep joking around with my brother. Of course, the one year that we actually have a hotel room blocks away from the San Diego Convention Center is the year that this happens. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, we, we can go to San Diego Comic Con and just walk right down the street to it. Yeah, we'll see what happens. All right. Anyway, so without further ado, let's jump on into my second part of the playthrough of Adventure Games The Dungeon, which is from Cosmos Games. It's designed by Phil... Walker Harding and Matthew Dunstan with artwork and graphic design provided by Martin Hoffman. This game is for one to four players, ages 12 and up, and it plays out in three approximately 90 minute chapters. This game is available now. There are two entries currently available in the Adventure Games line. And this one does carry an MSRP of $19.95. So let's swing on over to the other camera. If you didn't uh, catch yesterday's video, uh, let me point out this is kind of uh, almost along the lines of a choose your own adventure game. And what's what started off, we've, we've woken up, we're in a dungeon, and it's we could have up to four characters. I'm only using two characters. So we have Akoro the Strong and Haruka the Skilled. We've got uh, their health points here, which uh, Haruka already lost one because she was bitten by a snake that was down in this grate. So, so we have uh, checked out some stuff that's in this room here. We were able to find uh, and we were able to take an iron bar and a brick from the wall to create a makeshift hammer, which we then hammered down the rotting door. So we're now out into this room here. We've uh, we've talked to some of the prisoners. There are prisoners in the dungeon here, and they are uh, workers in a mine. They don't really know anything else about this dungeon. So we uh, we have some uh, some levers down here. We have a door here. This door is marked that it's uh, the guard's room. So we have not actually gone into this just yet. We've got the stairs here, and the stairs have 
a symbol above the stairway, and it's like a tri triangle pointing up, triangle pointing down, triangle pointing up. So I think that probably corresponds to these levers. So I have a feeling that we're supposed to push this lever here before we go up these stairs, because one of the prisoners did tell us that uh, this is uh, a trap up here. So Fleming Heron says that the universe is trying to tell me something. I'm not sure what it might be telling me. Yes, and the uh, the red meeple here had had a leg broken off. I have super glued that on. So yes, the red dude has two legs again. All right, so we're gonna jump back in here. So uh, I am going to go. So this is our adventure book that we kind of dive into. We've got three chapters. Our first chapter that we're in here is A1, Escape. There are supposedly five different finales for us. So, and uh, this stack here, these are the room tiles or room cards. These are kind of our items and things like that. Those are all over here as well. So we also have a bronze key, a coin, and a lucky charm. Do you want to mention there is a box on the cot here that does not have a key. There's no keyhole to it. We thought maybe we were going to be able to use this bronze key to open that up. There is no keyhole. So something we can use something to open this. And then there is something shiny down in this grate that we could not get our uh, hand down into. That's how uh, Haruka was bitten by the snake. I thought it'd be a rat, to be honest. I, I knew for sure it was going to be something uh, something like a rat down there. And of course, we were right. It was a snake that bit her. <laughs> so, but there's something down here, and it says we need something longer to be able to get something there. Now, we can move around from room to room however you want. So, uh, let's see. So, hey, Fred is here. Good deal, Fred Manzo, my pal is uh, popped into chat to hang out with us. So Fred is saying that he heard Origins was moved in November. No, it's been moved to October. It is moved to October, Fred. I actually have a news piece up on the website about it too. So Flaming Heron says, San Diego Comic-Con will never go off without a hitch. I don't know, it usually goes off without a hitch. But it, personally, the way I look at it is with Comic-Con, if anything, if they have to move the dates, they're going to cancel it. I just don't see them being able to actually uh, pull it off at any other dates, simply because that is like the big convention center in San Diego. In fact, uh, and plus, I also want to point out so much of Comic-Con takes place outside of the convention hall. There are loads and loads of storefronts that are left empty all year long, simply so that uh, we can have, oh, why don't I pop up there? Hello. Anyway, I was going to say there are uh, storefronts that are left empty all year long just so they can be rented out for Comic-Cons. So we will see what's going. So Fred says the usual gang from Long Island is all going in November so far. Uh, I, I swear, Origins just sent an email saying it was moved to October. Fred, so I don't know, I don't know what's going on with that. You keep saying November, unless they've changed their mind within the past few hours. But anyway, so yes, Fred and the gang, including my good pal, game designer Herman Letman, who we just played uh, a playthrough of Dawn of the Zeds live on the show where I got smoked like a cheap cigar. But uh, all right, so we're going to look at 605 because that is this lever down here. Like I said, I have a feeling that we have to push this lever to kind of match this symbol above. So it says, you try pulling the lever down, but it won't budge. Maybe it's rusty. Pulling it down? What are you talking about pulling it down? I thought we are pushing it up. All right, let's look at 505 then. Let's see what we get for 505. That is the other lever. You pull the left lever and hear a rumble above you. You look up and your eyes widen in horror as a huge stone comes loose from the ceiling above you and falls on your shoulder. 
Great. Well, we'll make it the strong guy here. Losing one health point. Now, we do have a lucky charm, which can allow us to uh, not lose that health point, but he's got enough health right now. Actually, he should have six of these. Does she have seven for some strange reason? Yep, there we go. So we will flip that on over. So he's lost a health point. Let's look at 705. So much for my idea of that matching up with the trap. You pulled out firmly on the lever, but it seems to be stuck. Is room card D already in play? If so, then read entry 175. Otherwise, nothing happens. But something tells you that you might be able to make progress here later. Uh, uh, all right. So that leaves us going up the stairs here at 405. We're going through the guards door at 805. Hmm. Well, might as well see what's going on with the... Yeah, let's go upstairs. Let's see what's going on. Well, then again, we're, we're still on the same level, so... Let's kind of spread those out over here. Uh, all right, guys, what do you say? Let's have you guys vote. Let's have the folks out there vote. So, upstairs or guard room? I'll give everybody a, a moment out there to vote on what we go to next. Try to escape. So we are actually only in the uh, the first chapter here. So hopefully we're going to uh, have an opportunity to play through, finish up this first chapter. Then uh, when I come back on Monday, we will pick up the next chapter as well. All right, so don't see anybody chiming in. So uh, hopefully uh, chat hasn't like bumped me off again. It's been doing that lately. Let's take a quick look. So I I do know that the stream is working. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> uh all right, Flaming Heron says no guts, no glory, guard room. Alright, anybody else? Anybody else chiming in? Going once, going twice, going to the guard room, 805. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so we already read this yesterday, but we'll we'll go through this again. It says the sign above the doorway says guards quarters. You gingerly try the handle and find the door is unlocked. You listen out briefly for sounds. That doesn't make sense. Uh, but can't hear anything. I wonder what's in there. Do you want to open the door quietly and carefully take a look inside? If so, then read entry 141. Or do you want to rush into the room ready for battle? Then read entry 156. Alternately, you can retreat quietly. Well, we don't have anything to fight with. So I think it's probably a good idea if we just open it up and take a peek quietly. So that's 141. You carefully open the door. When it's open just a crack, you catch sight of a man in the next room. You immediately stop opening the door and are just about to close it again when you hear a friendly voice. Don't be scared, I'm not a guard. And going by the way you're sneaking around here, you're trying to escape too, just like me. My name is Edric. Take room card E and place it to the right of room card C. Oops. There we go. That is room card E. Well, that doesn't look like much of a guard's quarters, does it? <laughs> okay. Take adventure card 90 and place it at the center of room card E so that all the location numbers are still visible. Okay, so... Doesn't tell us to flip over 90, though. Okay, there we go. I kind of get a kick out of this game. I think this game's kind of kind of fun. One thing I did mention yesterday is if you watched the playthrough of uh, the Exit game, House of Riddles, one thing that is different with these adventure games from this line is that they are replayable. Whereas the exit games, you kind of cut stuff up and you might tear things apart and things like that. This, you, you don't do that. There is replayability to this. There are different uh, endings to it as well. So 
So even if you play it, you can give it to a friend too, so they can play it as well. All right, so place your character figure on room E and read entry E. Upon entering the guard's quarters, you see a table, oven, shelf, and a cupboard to your left, and a barrel, as well as a door to your right. Okay, so... I don't know if we were supposed to look at card 90 or not. Just said take card 90. Oh, there we go. Yes, we are supposed to do that. Because that, uh, that is the guy we've just found. Play me here and says, yeah, this would be a cool digital title. Yeah, this would be pretty easy to uh, to port over to, to well, mobile platforms, PCs, consoles, things like that. So let's first of all, let's talk to him. So 407 is his number. So let's see what 407 tells us. Are you exploring this location for the first time? If so, then read entry 468. You approach the man wearily. He smiles at you broadly. All of the guards suddenly fled the dungeon in a panic last night. Who cares why? One of them dropped this yellow potion. The label says it's Aqua Regia. It melts gold. It sounded almost too good to be true, so without further ado, I tried it on the lock of my cell. I sprinkled just a few drops on the golden metal and immediately began to dissolve. And here I am now, searching for something to make up for my imprisonment before I make my escape. You eye him with interest. So, what have you found so far? Edric pulls an assortment of items out of his bag. See for yourself, maybe there's something you might find useful. If there is, then I'll be happy to sell it to you. After all, I have to think of the time after my captivity, don't I? Then he gives you a wink. <laughs> to purchase a medicinal herb, return one coin to the box and take adventure card 18. To purchase a ring, don't have that. Uh, to purchase a bronze key, we already have a bronze key. Don't think we need two just yet. Uh, you can purchase as many items as you can afford, uh, afford. You can talk to Edric at any time to make another deal. Uh, I think we should be all right. I don't think we should need to buy anything yet. I think we're okay. So basically, he's just a, kind of a shopkeeper. And I was kind of joking yesterday when we got this coin. I said, oh, well, when we get to the dungeon store, we'll be able to buy stuff. Well, there he is. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at 607. You climb up onto the table to reach the top shelf on the wall to the left. As you fumble around, your hand closes around a coin. Take adventure card 21. All right, now we got two coins. Money, money, money. Money. <laughs> 20? Or was it 21? Uh, 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 607, 21. Okay. There we go. So now we've got two coins, which are great for buying stuff. That's exactly what the cards say. Cards actually even say that. Okay, so let's put these all together here. Next up, uh, we've got 207. Let's look at 207. The oven is still hot and warms the room. Someone must have prepared a meal here not so long ago. Unfortunately, there's nothing left of it now. So that was the oven. Let's look at 107, which is the table. Stomach growling. You eye the almost empty plate on the table. There is only a tiny piece of cheese and a knife left on it. Edric clears his throat. I'm sorry to see you hungry, but the roast mutton was simply too tempting. Take adventure cards 24 and 52. So we're going to get a piece of cheese and a knife. So there's 24. There's our knife. And what was it? 52? Yep, 52. Piece of cheese. Free action. You may eat this piece of cheese during your turn to heal one health point. 
when you do return this adventure card to the box. So we've got uh, both the piece of cheese and the lucky charm, which will heal us. Moving right along, uh, 307, because that's uh, sort of a like, like a closet or something like that. 307. There's not. Oh, it's a cupboard. There's nothing in the cupboard but cleaning utensils. The broom might come in handy, though. Take adventure card 17. Huh. A broom. I wonder if that'd be long enough for us to use to try to get what's down in that grate. This is a simple wooden broom. We can try it. We can simply do that. In fact, you know what? Let's let's check that out. So, just for the heck of it, it doesn't really matter as far as who's doing what. Because it's, I'm only one player, so it, it doesn't matter. It's basically, if you were playing multiple players, then they could say, oh, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go do that. But uh, I'm just marking which room these, these folks go to. All right, so the broom. So we have 17. So if you didn't watch yesterday, what we do is we take the, the first number, the lower number, and we add it to... The location number or we can even add things together we can put things together uh in fact we might even take a look at putting the broom and the knife together make us uh, ourselves a spear maybe i don't know but first let's take 17 401 so we'll look at see if there's a 17 401 do, 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 do. there is but it says the broom is too slick. You cannot use it to grasp whatever is down there. Probably need to find something sticky. Let's see something here. Let's try to see if there's a 1724. <laughs> you got better things to do than whittle a broom. <laughs> Well, so much for my goofy idea of making it into a spear. So, uh, let's go back. We're back over here again, the two of us. So let's take a look at 507. Let's see what's in that barrel, that cask. You make out a big barrel with taps stuck in it at the back of the room. Could that? Red wine splashes out onto the floor when you turn the tap on. You quickly kneel in front of it and gulp down a few mouthfuls. Yeah, because, you know, of course, you're trapped in a dungeon. First thing you're going to want to do is get drunk. Hey, well, it quenched our thirst, right? Okay. So, uh, last thing we've got in this room is 707. Might as well do that. Might as well see what we got down here. So, 707. To the right is a heavy door. Since it has neither a lock nor a handle, it's impossible to open it from this side. All right, well, looks like we're going to be going up the stairs here, which uh, supposedly there's a trap above us. So we're going to move these out of the way. Uh, as this layout gets bigger, I, of course, will kind of zoom out a little bit. All right, so both of us are going to move into here. Too bad he didn't have any more of that uh, that potion that melted. Because we we saw this before. These For some reason, these locks are made of gold. I don't know why. Uh, but we saw that outside this door was was melted metal. So that's, uh, that's him. That's where he did that. All right, 405, up we go. You go up the stairs of the middle passageway and find yourself in a long corridor. You sense danger ahead, but keep going. Pa! What could possibly happen? You stride on boldly, and the corridor soon begins to widen again. After a few more steps, you spot a mighty portal. Take room card D and place it above room card C. Then place your character on room card D and read entry D. Okay, so there's our big portal. Uh, 
and entry D. The massive wooden portal is secured with three bronze locks. Well, we have one bronze key. We can buy another bronze key. That's two. Uh huh. Whatever lies behind it must be pretty important. To the left of the portal is a pile of wood. Thick spider webs cover the ceiling. Are we going to have to fight giant spiders? I don't think it's that kind of game. Although, I have to admit, I do believe this is taking place kind of medieval period. Maybe renaissance period. Uh, what else we got here? And there is something scrawled on the wall to the left. Just close to you, a stone slab sticks up a little from the ground to the right of which stands a barrel. A large stone mask casts its gruesome gaze down on you from above the portal. Take adventure card 80 and read it out loud. All right, there's adventure card 80. Oh, the tension. <laughs> The stone mask. When you took your last step, you already had a hunch that the mask was watching you. As you want to continue your way, you hear a whistling sound coming from the mask's mouth. Great. An arrow shoots from it. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna be the uh, the strong guys who did that. So if you are a Koro, read entry one fifty nine. <laughs> Take it by surprise, you remain rooted to the spot. But the arrow only grazes your arm. You lose one health point. Well, I think we are going to actually eat that piece of cheese. And get that health point back. So we remove this card from the game. We also remove this card from the game. So let's take a look at the spider web. Uh, we will have... She's looking at the spider web. Watch, she'll get bit by a spider. You look up with disgust at the huge network of spider webs in the corner and contemplate what its inhabitant eats here. Suddenly... Oh my gosh. Here we go. You realize a huge spider has crawled onto your hand. You freeze. The spider also looks at you with its eight eyes for a split second before biting you. We saw that coming a mile away, didn't we? The spider seems just as scared as you are. As the pain begins to spread, you shake it off in panic. Take adventure card 26. What is this going to be like a poison card? Jeez. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, a lot of this stuff's kind of crooked here. I'll straighten these out a little bit. Mm-hmm. All righty, so uh, adventure card 26. There we go. And spider bite. Uh, I don't know. As long as you have this card, every time you lose health points, you lose one additional health point. You cannot trade this card. All players, including you, can combine an adventure card with this card in your location. With the right combination, the bite can be treated. Wonder if we could treat it with the wine. I mean, alcohol? Eh. Oh, Flaming Heron says was going to consider using the broom on the web. Ah, yes. Just for laughs, let's see what would have happened. Let's take a peek. So that would have been... 17 509 Yep We would have lost the broom So uh but yes, that was uh, that was a good, good move, good move. All right, so 
that was the spiders just for the heck of it we're going to both move down here and let's see the spider bite card is 26 so let's look at 26 507 I don't think it's gonna do anything You're like, what, are you trying to get your arm drunk? Not even in here. So it's not even something that they considered anybody was going to try to do. All right, so we'll both move back up here. All right, so let's take a look. Oh, you know. Well, let's see if we're going to find another bronze key. Let's take a look at 209. Although it'd be kind of weird to find. Well, we found the key down here too. So 209. We're going to look through that wood. You steal along the corridor to take a closer look at the pile of wood on the floor as you approach. Oh, come on. Really? Another arrow? Uh, you look up to see an arrow shooting from the mouth of the stone mask above the portal toward you. Unfortunately, you're far too close to avoid it in time, and pain sears through your shoulder as it's pierced by the arrow. Next time, you'd do well to steer clear of the stone mask. Lose two health. Okay, so we'll do, uh... Okay, so she's lost another one here. He's gonna lose two. As far as I understand, you can't die in this game. But I am going to take a stab in the dark that when you when you finish up, uh, because I think you score at the end of the game, I think you count how many uh, characters you've used and how much health you have left. That's that's a guess I've got. I don't know if that's true, but okay, let's move these over a little bit. Okay, moving right along. We got about uh, about 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes to go. I'm taking a stab in the dark that maybe when we get this door open, that's the end of our first chapter. All right, let's look at 609. Let's see what 609 has to tell us. It's uh, something scrawled on the wall. Hopefully we don't get shot with another arrow. <laughs> says you see a message scrawl on the stone wall beware of the beast from the depths <laughs> well, the beast from the depths all right 409 we got a loose stone one of the stone slabs in the floor just near you wobbles when you step on it is something maybe hidden underneath it do you want to lift the stone up and take a look underneath if so then read entry 322 Right, so she's going to take a look to see what's under the stone. Hopefully it's not something else that's going to bite us. <laughs> so, uh, 322. You try with all your might to lever the stone out, but the crack is just too small. Maybe you could manage it if you had the right tool. Uh, maybe use our knife? Let's try to use our knife. So that is 24, 24, 409. With a precise stab, you wedge the knife into the gap beside the loose stone slab. After a few attempts, you're able to lift the stone slightly. You should be able to reach under the stone now. It will probably break the blade though. If you think that's worth the risk, read entry 244. Uh, I gotta say, I don't know where we're going to get another bronze key to open this up. So, might as well risk it. Break the knife. Slowly but surely, you loosen the stone with your knife. As feared, the blade breaks after a while. But... What you discover beneath the stone makes up for this. Yay. It says return adventure card 24 to the box. Take adventure card 44. All right, so we broke the knife. Knife is gone. 
Take adventure card 44. An emerald. A precious green gemstone. It says two points. Oh, it's victory points. Okay, so that's points towards our score at the end. All right, the only other thing left is this barrel. But the thing is, if I go to the barrel, am I going to get shot with another arrow? It's like, might as well, 309. There's a big barrel just near you. You curiously pull the lid off and peck inside. Or I'm sorry, peek inside. I was going to say peck, what? It looks empty, but it's really too dark to say for sure. Do you want to reach inside? Jeez. If so, then read entry 909. Hey, as we used to joke all the time, I only got one speed. Falls out. So let's go to 909. <laughs> Jeez. As you fumble around in the barrel, your hand closes around a coin. Take adventure card 22. Well, uh, we got another coin, but what we really needed was another key. So we have gone through everything that we've got in this room. So we have three coins. And we can go down back to Edric here and we can buy one key but it looks like we need three keys to open this up let's double check uh, 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 uh. well I guess we don't want to go near that yet because I'm sure it's going to shoot us so, I wonder how we could maybe knock out that... The mask doesn't have a number, so there's nothing we can actually combine or use together or anything like that. So... Uh... Huh. So that's everything there. Let's go back. We'll talk to Edric by a key. So it was 407. Ah, it's you again. Do you maybe still want to buy something? To purchase a medicinal herb, return one call. Okay, to purchase a ring. So, uh, cost a coin. It'll cost us a coin. We'll get rid of that. To get another key so that says card 20 another bronze key so the thing is we have to find another key somewhere around here we have not been able to get into rooms 105 or 205 and we don't know what's down in here there's something shiny. I have a feeling the shiny thing is another key. And then we have this box, but I could have swore we tried to use the key. Where's the other bronze key? 13, there we go. 13 and 20. Uh, we tried to use the key on this box here, which is 701. And I'll go back. I'll read this again. And it tells us that there is no... There's there's no keyhole. Uh, have I used all the levers? Yes. Uh, 505 dropped something on our heads. That we took a, a point of damage for. 605 won't budge. And 705, uh, we... we did that and we heard some some gears and stuff churning so uh, we have tried every one of the gears now the 605 it's possible we could use something with it but all we really have is that broom so 
me try something here. Let's see. 2701. Yeah, see, the metal box doesn't have a keyhole. Huh, uh, 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 uh. Let's see. Don't really have anything that. I don't know. Don't know. Hmm. It's gotta be something between this box and this grate. Something's gotta be. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Uh, I bet you. How much do you want to bet? Let's take a look at 509. Double check to see we didn't miss something dropping out of the web. Nope. Not at all. Okay. So, yeah. Flaming Heron was right. We should have used the broom on that, I bet you. It would have cost us the broom. But, I think we would have maybe you've gotten something out of it. All right, so, well, just for the heck of it, let's see. Let's use a bronze key on the shackles here. Although, I don't see why that would do anything. So, that would be 13301. Will the key maybe unlock the skeleton's chains? You try the key in the left shackle and it springs open. Oh, I'm surprised! Without its support, the skeleton's arm drops down. You spot something glittering in a crack behind it. Do you want to get it out? If so, take adventure card 16. How much you want to bet that's going to be our other key? And survey says... Oh, it's a ruby. Oh, okay. So we got some points there. All right, but that's not going to help us as far as getting another key. Let's see. All right, let's try. I don't think the bronze keys are going to work to open these cells. So let's take a look. So let's say 13105. Because they're, go they're gold, so I'd assume you need like a gold key. Key doesn't fit. There you go. Got that. Okay. Anything else? Well. Let's try going back here. We'll both go back here. And let's see if we'll, we'll use one bronze key. Even though it's got three locks, maybe we only need one key. Dun, 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 dun. So let's try that. 13, 109. Read entry 109. Oh, great. Here we go. We're going to get shot by an arrow. Here it comes. You walk along the corridor to the great portal. As you approach, you hear a whistling sound. There we go. You look up to see an arrow shooting toward you from the mouth of the stone mask above the portal. Unfortunately, you're far too close to escape its path, and pain sears through your leg as it is pierced by the arrow. Next time, you do well to steer clear of the stone mask, you lose two health points. Okay. So I will use the lucky charm to ward that off. Get rid of that. So what's the other bronze key? 20? So it looks like 2109. It's probably going to tell me the same thing. 
Yeah, it says read entry 109. Uh, all right. So. I don't know. This is kind of weird. So, uh, Fred just said October, question marks. Uh, as far as origins, Fred, I swear that's what the news piece said. The, uh, the news release that I got that they had sent me says, uh, they've moved origins from June to, uh, October and it's the 7th through the 11th. So, so that's when I changed my, my room for. All right. Huh. I'm curious. See, the thing too is, what's interesting is the characters don't have like a number like you could use. Like we've got the skilled, she's the skilled, he's the strong. So I don't know. I'm kind of stuck here. This is kind of, kind of wild. So I, I'm taking a guess. Whatever we're trying to find is in this grate. That is what I'm taking a guess. All right, so just for laughs, where's our, where's our broom? Here's our broom. It's 17. Just for the heck of it. Let's see if we take 17 and 13. We got a broom and a key. Right. Uh, any change here, gang? Or uh, are we still looking at uh, some some lousy audio? So while we're doing that, let me look at 705. We're going to go to 165. Now the audio is okay? That's weird. Yeah, that's, that's very strange. I don't know. Uh, how much you want to bet? Windows is doing some sort of update in the background that it's not supposed to do. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, you're not scheduled to be able to do anything to my computer during this time period. And Microsoft's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> hey, Malwinius is in chat. Good to see you again. Thanks for popping by. All right, 165. Thanks, uh, thanks for the heads up on this flaming here on. I was like, what the hell am I doing? 
It says, with a jerk, you finally manage to move the lever down. It seems to have triggered a mechanism because when you press your ear to the wall, you can hear a soft hum and the clattering of gears. The stone mask above the portal in the room across the corridor finally closes its deadly mouth. Yay! Yes, yes! Uh, a Koro has like a couple of arrows sticking out of him. It's like, oh, oh. It's got like one in his shoulder, one in his leg. Fantastic! You found a way to deactivate the trap. Return room card D to the box. Take, take room card Q and place it where room card D was previously. Then place all the character figures that were on room card D on room card Q instead. And we are going to read entry Q. All right, so. It is basically the same thing, except I notice we've got a change in the door and we've got a change in the the wood because when we, when we went towards the wood, we got shot with that arrow and that wasn't fun. So let's go to 809. See what we get with 809 here. You find a coin in the wood pile. Take adventure card 23. Boy, we just got loads of dough here, huh? <laughs> All right. Good deal. Good deal. Good to have Fred hanging out and chat with us, gang. That's cool. Looking forward to seeing Fred at Origins. Okay, so there's our coins. So what do we got? Three coins? Yep. So we got the three coins there. So that was 809. Let's look at 709. Will it allow us to unlock all these locks with one key? That's what I'm kind of curious about. Uh, 709. You feel around the edges of the door with your fingers and feel a slight draft. Could this way lead to freedom? You'll need three bronze keys to open the three bronze locks first, though. If you have three bronze keys, you can use them here. Arrange the card numbers in ascending order and read the corresponding six-digit entry. Crap. <laughs> so we need three bronze keys. So we already bought one off of uh, Edric here. So there's got to be... They, they got to be in one of these two rooms. So let's, let's pop back down here. Let's look at 105 again. Because there was, uh, if I remember right, I think this one is, um, all right. So it says, uh, the first door has a little barred opening and a golden lock. Does anyone have adventure card 74? I don't think we do. I don't think we have anything that high. Nope. Otherwise read entry 544. Don't you want to bet that, um. Adventure card 74 is the the metal. So, uh, so Melwinius is like, hey, Fleming Heron, you've got a wrench. <laughs> Didn't notice that before. Yes, uh, I made Flaming Heron a moderator. In fact, the Madman is here. And I know the Madman said that uh, they were happy to be a moderator too. Reason why uh, I did that is because Yesterday, we had somebody pop in and yeah, it was like, like, get out of here. So uh, rather than having like whatever idiocy somebody throws out there, uh, sitting there in chat, uh, at least if I have a moderator, then if they you know, somebody says something like really nasty or rude, uh, then they can just bump them. They can kick them right on out. So... All right, it is uh, eight o'clock. So what I am going to do here is uh, I am, damn, 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 damn. On one hand, I'm like, yeah, we should probably wrap this up. But on the other hand, I'd like to try to get that other key to open this up, which I believe will end the first chapter. And we can pick up chapter two on Monday. Hmm. 
I don't see any other thing that was changed, anything that was different. So 309, we got, I remember right, we got a, a gem or something out of that. Yeah. So do you want to reach inside? 909. And... Yep, we got Adventure Card 22, which was... That was 22. Did we use it? Oh, there's a coin. Coin, coin. Yeah, it was a coin. We found a coin. There's 22. It's 22 right there. <sighs> Trying to figure who... Okay, let's go to 205. Let's see. We'll check the other room there again. But I think, once again, it's going to tell me... Okay, so it's like, do you have Adventure Card 75? No. Otherwise, read entry 644, which I believe it was a prisoner that we talked to. Yep. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, the League of Guardians is the symbol. That's what they told us about there. I swear, I think that we're looking at the shiny object down there has got to be the other bronze key. But the thing is, I'm wondering, how do we open this thing up? Just for the heck of it. <laughs> Let's look at one of the coins. Uh, 15. I don't think we're prying it open with a coin, but never know. Because something's in this box, and something's down that grate. So we're looking for 15701. Not even saying anything. <laughs> so, I mean, it's kind of like, what are you, an idiot? You must be some sort of an idiot. Uh, let's try 13401. Okay, so, yeah, I just thought maybe we could pull the grade up. Uh, we already tried the broom with that. We're not going to try the rubies or anything. I don't know. So, uh, hey, and Melvinius is mentioning that um, they've got some vacation time, so they're going to actually be able to watch the stream live more often. That's cool. Very cool. So, Flaming Heron says, the question, is it that easy? I don't know. What's going on with this? So, you know, how much you want to bet if we use the broom? I wonder if we can do... I think we can do things over again. Don't we still have the broom? We didn't use the broom. No. Let's see what we get. Let's try 17509. Because those spiderwebs are still there, right? Seventeen five oh nine. When you use the broom to sweep away the spiderwebs, something tinkles on the floor. What, somebody's peeing on the floor here? What? Huh? What kind of spiders spun those webs anyway? When you glance down at the broom, you see that it's crawling with spiders. Grossed out, you toss it away. Return adventure card 17 to the box. Take adventure card 25. Let's see what tinkled to the floor. Son of a gun. There you go! Ah ha ha! So, Fleming Huron says, trying to think outside the box, either something to latch onto the key if it's down the grate, or something magnetic. I was thinking something sticky. But there isn't anything that we can use, we can make. What are we going to do? Put wine on a coin? <laughs> make it sticky? I don't know. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. It looks like... What is going on here? So it it looks like 
the video here has stopped. The overhead video. So let me move back over to this. And I'm going to turn this back on because um, I was just moving my hands, right? And uh, I'm, I look up. Yeah, it's, you know what? I, I guarantee you, Windows is doing an update and that's what's messing this up because it never fails, never fails. All right, so uh, let me go back here real quick. Yeah, see, it's uh, it's just locked that up. But that's okay. So we've got three bronze keys. <laughs> Talk about timing, right? So we've got the three bronze keys because the spider web did contain another bronze key. Uh, we've gotten rid of the broom. So we got the three keys. We will be opening up uh, 709. I'm going to look in the book real quick because uh, I'm going to take a wild guess that this is going to end the chapter. So I'll read this entry here, and then we'll see if that ends the chapter. If not, I'll just wrap the show up. So you feel around the edges of the door need three bronze keys. If you have three bronze keys, you can use them here. Arrange the card numbers in ascending order and read the corresponding six-digit entry. So we've got 25, 13, and 20. So it's 13, 20, 25. <laughs> Let's take a look. Hey, and Michael Sabat has popped in to chat just as we're wrapping up the show. Thanks for joining us. Looks like we're probably wrapping up the first chapter of Adventure Games The Dungeon. All right, come on. 13, 2025. All right, come on. Where is that? So wait a second, so it said ascending, so it's 13, 20, 25. But there's no six digit numbers here? So is it, wait a second, is it, does that mean that's 13, 2025? Let's see, <laughs> I don't know, this is weird. Taking a peek here. Oh, found it. There's like two or three entries that have the all of these. It says, you turn the keys one by one, unlock all three bronze locks, and push the door open. At first, you're blinded by the bright sunlight. Then you realize that this is the way to freedom. You call your companions over. Well, it's a companion. I only got one. And gather at the exit. Return adventure cards 13, 20, and 25 to the box. 13, 20, 25. Okay, so we're getting rid of all, all of our keys. The bronze keys are gone. Take room card F. Okay, so we'll we'll take care of that. Um, yep, so it says we're, it, we'll be starting chapter two. So that's what we'll end up doing on Monday's show. We will start chapter two. We will finish up with the entry for us. Opening up the locked doors. And uh, I will actually put the new room out right now. That's weird how it froze up the uh, other camera. I never see that. Usually if there's ever a problem, it's with the Nikon that's shooting me straight on. So anyway, all right. Uh, that's it for this time out. Glowing Turtle just popped in as I'm wrapping up. <laughs> uh, good to see you, Glowing Turtle. Thank you very much for, for stopping in. Anyway, I do want to point out, if uh, you've been celebrating any religious holidays lately, this week, over the weekend, happy holidays to you. Uh, as far as uh, the next show, the next show will be Monday, because I don't do episodes of The Daily Dope on Fridays currently. We might do it again in the, in the future. I don't know. But do want to point out 
that uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I know somebody already gave it a dislike while it was streaming, whatever. But uh, <laughs> if you do, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to the channel. And if you subscribe, don't forget, ring that little bell because it will not only notify you when the Daily Dope streams live Mondays through Thursdays, in the evenings, right here on YouTube, it'll also tell you when my standalone videos get uploaded as well. And there will be some, some new videos over the weekend. Keep my fingers crossed. We will actually have uh, Call of Cthulhu with myself, Elliot Miller, my nephew Cameron, as well as his girlfriend, Lexi. For future games, we also have Elliot's son, Brian, on board too. So that's pretty wild. So we're probably going to max out at four player characters and myself but uh, not for this first adventure it's going to just be the three of them so i'm hoping to have that uh, for us to do that on sunday but of course when you aren't watching videos on the gaming gang channel be sure to visit the gaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news reviews comics movies tv you know the drill get your geek on at the gaminggang.com and of course, if you were watching live, thank you very much. Always appreciate people hanging out in chat. Uh, yes, the, the, the Daily Dose has been a little odd past couple of weeks, but it's uh, sheltering in place, right? So just kind of blowing off some steam, having some fun, doing some playthroughs. We will get back to the news when things get back to normal and we have many more news stories to report on. But of course, even if you don't watch live, if you watch after the fact, maybe even on Memorex. I got a very soft spot in my heart for you folks as well. In fact, I appreciate anybody taking some time out to watch the show or check out any of the videos on the channel. All right, so everybody enjoy the rest of your Thursday night slash Friday morning. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a very safe weekend. Social distancing, folks. It's working. Not working as, you know, as well as it could, but it is working. So until I see everybody on Monday, <clears throat> be smart and stay safe. Oh, you're still here. Well, if that's the case, by all means, subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel by clicking right here. And of course, if you want to catch up on past episodes of The Daily Dope, check out this playlist. And if you'd like to see what YouTube's recommending you take a peek at from the channel, just give a click right over here. Of course, I'm Jeff McAleer, and once again, thank you very much for watching.